Hello everyone. Um, this is another part of the chapter nine tutorial, but this one is another exercise that we want to to do. And this exercise is exercise nine point one in the twelfth edition of Operation Management, Sustainability, and Supply Chain Management. It is by Jay Hazer and Barry Renner. Um, the exercise that we want to do here is still based on layout decision as i said is still uh, in a process oriented layout in this case you're looking at the mystery job shop and according to what they are saying they say that this job shop has four departments we have the machining which is m the dipping in chemical buff which is d the finishing which is f and the plating which is p now all these four departments has been assigned to four areas now the operation manager mary Mars has gathered the following data for the job shop as it is currently laid out which is plan a now first of all it the current layout is plan a and then the information that is given in this table here it says it hundred of p of work pieces move between work areas of um for each year plan uh, for each year and this one is for plan a now what they mean is like these are the four department and these are the number of units what we used to call in the mpc case that you call them the workflow i mean uh yeah the workflow matrix the flow matrix something like that now in this one we have four departments we have m d f and p it says that we have six or 600 work pieces because here it is in 100 so we have 600 work pieces that are moving from m to d and we have eight uh we have 1.8 that are moving from m to f and so on and so on the reason why there are dashes here it just means that uh, this one uh, is the other way around. We have six that uh, we have six hundred that are moving from M to D, which is almost almost the same as saying we have um, six hundred that are moving to D uh, from D to M. So it's the same thing. Now this is the workflow matrix or the flow matrix. Sorry. Now these are the distances. Now these are the distances between department. We have twenty feet between department m and department d we have 12 feet between department m and department f we have also eight feet between department m and department p so this is how it works now they say that it costs 0 0.5 dollars to move from one work piece uh to move one work piece one foot in the job shop now mary's goal is to find the layout that has the lowest material handling cost so the first one they want us to determine the uh, the cost of the current layout which is the one that they gave in plan in plan a which is um this is the workflow yeah this is the distances here yeah. they want us to find the um, handling cost in short of this plan now b they say that one alternative one alternative is to switch those departments with the i load namely finishing f and plating p which alters the dif the distance between them and mentioning m and dp so this uh, the second part which is question b we need to calculate again the cost of this layout here using the same uh unit flow here and C is the same thing, but now they say that they change the layout, which is now the layout with plan C. And it is said that Mary is now want to evaluate plan C, which also switches M and D. This is what they did. They just uh, switched the department. And then finally, question D is asking us to find what is the best cost perspective. So as I said, the first thing after analyzing all this, you notice that there's nothing that changed. Uh, the only thing that is that remain constant is the number of units that are moving from one department to another. The, th the other three tables that are given is the distances, is the distances between department and they are shifting because departments are being moved here and there. So first thing that we need to do in this case study is to identify first of all, is to identify first of all that the flow metric. The flow metric is in Android as I said. This is the table that is already given in the problem. The table with yeah this table here yeah. this is the table that is given and we are going to use it for all our calculation so we have yeah this is our table and now now we are working first of all for the current layout this is the flow metric in short remember that this flow metric is in 100 that means the number of units that are moving from m to d is 600 the ones that are moving from f to f 
is 18 tam android which give 1800 unit same applies for the rest of the unit here now the second part now this is the distance flow metric uh, the distance uh, the distance metric plan in short uh, the distance metric for plan a in this case they are telling us that this one between bracket is in feet yeah so what they are saying what they are telling us is like it, it 20 feet for the distance between m and d and we have 12 feet between the distance from m and f and so on and so on so the first thing that we need to do we uh, we work for like we did for the mpc we use our rows so we have row one row one is telling us that we are we start with the distance and then we multiply by the number of units that are moving row one we are working for m here m and d the distance is 20 how many units are moving from m and d we are here we have six units that are moving so we have our six unit here plus uh six units here plus still in the same row we have m and f the distance is 12 and then we have how many units are moving from f to f from m to f we have 18 plus uh, M here it is now still in the same row we have M and P the distance is 8 and how many units now are moving from M to P it's 2 unit and we will calculate for row, two, row 1 and then we have row 2 in this case now row 2 is the distance between D and F the distance is 6 how many units now are moving from D to F we have 4 units that are moving actually it's not 4 it's 400 units then we have uh, D and P, how many, the distance is 10, how many units are moving from D to P, we have 2, which is 200 unit, and then we have a value here, and then we have row 3, when it comes to row 3, we only have uh, one distance between F and P, F and P, we have 4 feet, and then the number of unit is 18, which is 18 times 100 which is 1800 so we might we have 18 here now we need to do our calculation for row 1 we get 20 times 6 plus 12 times 18 plus 8 times 2 which gives us 342 i mean 352 so the value that we get here it is the value uh we can put it like we can say this value here is is it the distance in Tosho will put it like it's in feet but according to what they are saying according to what they are saying in the problem here they say that it cost 0 0.5 dollar to move one work piece for one feet so in short what we have the answer here about the the 352 that we get here we need to multiply it first of all by 100 to know the total in feet so it's the 300 that we multiply by 100 which gives us a total of 352 and then we have our 100 yeah so the value that we have here we can agree that it's in feet mm, 352 now we have one zero yeah now we do the same thing for row 2 when it comes to row 2 we have 6 times 4 plus 10 times 2 and we get 44 that we multiply by 100 and we have a value of 4400 feet we do the same thing for the last one which is 4 times 18 which gives us 72 72 times and uh, 72 times 100 which gives us 72 and then we have 100 feet here now what is the total distance the total ending the total first of all this is the total distance the total distance traveled The total distance will be the 35200 plus 4400 plus 7200. And what is the value that we get? The value that we get is 3420 plus 4400 plus 7200. And the value that we get is 468. So it's 46,800. These are feet. But they are saying that. This is where the cost component get inside. We are talking about uh, it costs 0 0,5 to move one workpiece uh, 
one foot in the job but in total we don't have one foot here what we have is the total is 46,800 feet so we need to multiply it by 0 0.5 dollars to get our value in dollars so the value that we get here we multiply by 0 0.5 which gives us a total value of 23,400 dollars so this is the traveling cost for this layout here i mean for this plan we can if you can put it in that way so this is what we get here now we need to do the same for uh for metric for plan b now for plan b the only thing that changed is saying that all the factors all the where is it for plan b they say that they switch those departments with the high load namely finishing which is f and plating so they try to switch them because they had very high low uh, uh i uh, i mean i load so what they did this is the new table this table is already given in the problem you don't need to worry you just need to go back to the problem and you look at it this one here is the distance flow metric so what we need to do from distance flow metric here we must calculate we must take the same value again for the flow metric the one that we have here is not changing as i said it's the same for all for all the exercises the only thing that is changing now is the distance so yes yeah this is the flow metric we took from the initial problem now we do the same thing this is the flow metric and this is the distance here so what we are doing is like we calculate again for row one we have row one here now for row one we are working with the distance table here the distance table is m to d the distance is 20 so we have 20 feet then how many units are moving from m to d it's six based on the new layout and then we go again for m to f how many the distance is let me mention here the distance here feet so that means the distance between m and f is eight so we have eight here that we multiply by m and f the load is 18 plus we open our bracket again the distance between m and p the distance is 12 so we take our value of 12 that we multiply by m and p the number of unit is 2 200 in short and we get our value here row 3 is the same when it comes to no sorry to row 2 when it comes to row 2 we have uh, the distance between we are already on this row here the distance between d and f is 10 is 10 that we multiply by the flow metric how many units are moving from d to f is 4 so we have 4 here then we look at d and p the distance is 6 how many units are moving now from d to p here yeah, we have 2 we have equal and then we have row 3 now when it comes to row 3 um we have f here f and p the distance is four so we have four feet here that to multiply by now the number of things that are moving from f to p is 18 that means we have 18 here and we need to calculate our total distance now the first one is 20 times 6 plus 8 times 18 plus 12 times 12 and we get 288 and the value that we get here we must multiply it by 100 and the value that we get is 288 and then we have 100 feet we do the same for row 2 is 10 times 4 plus 6 times 12 uh, 6 times 2 sorry which gives us 52 and the 52 here we multiply by 100 which gives us 5200 feet so 40 plus 12 yeah now row 3 is 4 times 18 which gives us 72 and the 72 we multiply by 100 and we get 72 feet 7 to 100 feet so again the same way that we did in the previous one we need to take again all these value and we add them to get the total we can call uh, total distance traveled 
the total distance will be the 28800 we multiply by 52 sorry we add by 5200 plus 7200 and the value that we get is 28800 plus 5200 plus 7200 and we get 412 this one of the feet but we need now to find the the total cost to then we take this value and we multiply it by um, 0 0.5 dollars so we have this value multiplied by 0 0.5 which gives us 206 hundred dollars uh, yeah 206 hundred dollar this is the value that we get from this part here next what we do let me just check everything to see yeah now next what we need to do is for layout six so let me just highlight it like this and then you have like this yeah now for plan c we have the distance again this is now the distance for the new metric plan the metric plan for c so they just made some changes what are the changes that they made According to them, they think that Mary is now want to evaluate Plan C, which also switches the Miling M and the Drilling D. So it just switched the value and the table is already given. So we work again with the flow uh, metric. We always use the same flow metric, yeah. But now this is for Plan C. What we do is like we need to calculate again which row is it. So we have row one row one in this case we start again with the distance we are working from m to d the distance is 20 we are working this one here the distance is 20 and then the number of units is 6 plus we have m and f which is 10 and the distance the number of units is m is 18 plus m and 6 the number the distance is 6 number of unit is 2 which is equal to and then we go for row 2 row 2 we have the distance between d and f which is 8 and number of units between d and f is 4 so we have 4 here plus d and then we do for d and p the distance is 12 and then the number of units for dp is 2 which is equal to a value and we have row 3 here row 3 is um from f to p we have four a number of units that are moving from f to p we have 18 and your value of 18 here then we need to sum up everything the first one is 20 times 6 plus 10 times 18 plus 6 times 2 which gives us 312 312 yeah that this is 312 feet that we need to multiply by 100 and you can just say 212 times 100 which gives us 21200 and then your yeah, fit here yeah. the second one is 8 times 4 plus 12 times 2 which gives us 56 56 times 100 which gives us 5600 and then we have fit here yeah. and the third one is 4 times 18 which gives us uh, 72 uh, times 100 which gives us 7200 and then we have feet here yeah. so what we do again we take those value and we add them this is the total traveled distance the total travel distance now will be 312 plus 56 plus 72 what do we get? So it's three one two one two plus five six zero zero plus seven two zero zero, which gives us four hundred and forty zero. Now we forty four zero, and we have the third one. These are the feet that we multiply by um, zero comma five dollar. If we multiply by zero comma five, we get an answer of twenty two thousand. The value that we get here is in dollars so this is the total traveling distance for we can 
for plane C. Now, based on the information we have here, the question that is asked for question D is which layout is be is a be uh, is best from a cost perspective. Now, from a cost perspective, we need to look at the layout that is the lowest. How do you call it? That is the lowest traveling distance or traveling cost. Because in this case, you're talking about a cost. So the first one gives us. Um, what is the first one? The current layout here yeah, gave us something like twenty-three thousand. The the uh, the second one gave us twenty thousand, and the last one gave us twenty-two. So from these three layout three layout, you will see that the best layout is Plan B because it has to a it has a value of twenty thousand and six hundred, which is the lowest. So, uh, Plan B is the best layout so plan b is the layout that should be considered if she really want to minimize the cost and to use that layout in short that is about this question again thank you so much for your time and i hope that this tutorial was helpful thank you